Let's welcome in our next guest, Ajay Bodke, CEO and Chief Portfolio Manager, PM Asset Prabhudas Leeladhar Ajay. Thank you so much for taking out time for us. What do you make of the last seven, eight days? And you know, where do you think uh, the markets would stop seeing this selling pressure? You think it's just technical in nature and it will readjust in Jan once funds come back and they start to allocate into India and other emerging markets? Good morning, Pankaj, uh, for having me on the show. I think, uh, Pankaj, we're in the midst of a strong risk of trade and we are seeing large FI outflows as a result of that. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of near-term headwinds that the market will have to navigate. I think uh, three or four key headwinds that we'll have to uh, grapple with. Essentially, we are seeing sort of, you know, almost certain uh, on the US front that there will be at least three rate increases uh, to stay off uh, medium-term inflationary pressures out there, which is in turn fueling this risk of trade. Also, the reflationary policies which will be pursued by the new president-elect, I think also are expected to lead to outflows to US. Uh, on the domestic front, I think, uh, uh, before that, I think, you know, on the global crude oil front also, we are seeing that after eight years, OPEC and non-OPEC members have had some sort of an agreement. And one clearly is seeing a good amount of uh, 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 oversight being exercised by some of the members out there. So the worry for a large oil importer like India is that if the oil were to touch $60 or $65 sort of in the medium term, then we are looking at a large uh, pressure on uh, sort of, you know, uh, on, on the out, uh, on, on India's balance sheet. I think every $1 rise in uh, crude prices leads to uh, nearly a billion dollars of outflows, uh, increased sort of, you know, import bill. And also the government's fisc also gets under uh, slight pressure because of the subsidies on kerosene and LPG. So unless the government is able to push uh, either reduce excise duty that further increases the pressure on the fisc or have to go in for increase in uh, petrol and diesel prices, the government has gone in for two rupees increase. But uh, I don't know sort of if the price rises, uh, if the price or if the crude prices go up very sharply, whether the government will uh, go in for a complete pass through or will employ a combination of a redu reduction in excise duties and increase. So, uh, so I think you know that again is something that we must keep on horizon. Well, this demonetization uh, thing has clearly pushed off the aggregate demand, consumption-led aggregate demand, uh, both in the rural side in particular and also in urban side, uh, by at least, in my opinion, by three to six months. And markets are slave of earnings. Right now, we haven't yet seen any large uh, uh, cut in the EPS numbers for FY17. My guess is that I think uh, as against 23% uh, uh, growth in FY17 earnings penciled in uh, by analysts, one could see a savage cut out there. Uh, 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 sort of, you know, it could be uh, 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 nearly half of that. Sort of, you know, so we could be en ending up with you know, 10 to 12% earnings growth in FI17. And the bounce back in FI18 is completely dependent upon how fast the uh, currency comes back in circulation. So I think uh, there are these uh, 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 challenging headwinds domestic and sort of, you know, uh, local that we have to uh, navigate. Plus, I think the rollout of GST from 1st of April looks quite unlikely and quite remote. I think maybe a July rollout uh, is possible if the government and the uh, central and state governments are able to uh, reach to, uh, reach, reach some sort of agreement. So I think there are a lot of wall of worries that the market has to climb. And it's only then that the market, uh, one can see a trigger in the uh, market. Also, uh, uh, some people are expecting RBI to cut rates aggressively after December 31st. But again, uh, a falling uh, rupee uh, uh, sort of, you know, and the fact that the demand is sort of, you know, uh, we don't know how fast the demand will come back. So the, uh, the, the external pressures also will keep RBI in check in terms of how much can they cut uh, rates. Uh, so although the fall in the market, in my opinion, uh, from here uh, will not be excessive, maybe we could stabilize a, a hundred points down from here in nifty terms, 1700, 7850, uh, that's the range. But what is it that will take the market up? I think that is something which, uh, uh, I mean, uh, seems very difficult sort of you know, right now to envisage. Valuations, yes, but the valuations are dependent on the earnings growth. And if the earnings growth itself is going to be cut savagely, then I think one will have to reconcile to the fact that the market will remain range-bound uh, for some time to come, Pankaj. Right. In terms of uh, NBFCs, what is your view? You know, whether it's a Bajaj Finance, whether it's a Bharat Financial, m and Finance, you know, any NBFC has corrected quite a lot. What would you look to, uh, you know, which names would you look to buy? And would you just wait and watch for the Q3 numbers before taking a big uh, bet on any of these NBFC names? I think, Pankaj, it would pay not to be too adventurous in case of NBFCs right away. You did mention that the prices have fallen. 
But then from where did they rise? If you just take a, a slightly longer term perspective, a year, year and a half and look at what valuations they were trading and then sort of, you know, this entire hoopla uh, uh, that, 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 that got created for the right reasons. I think, you know, both in the asset and liability sides, they had great advantages vis-a-vis -vis corporate focused banks and that's why investors flocked into them. But, uh, but, but that resulted in the valuations becoming too expensive. And now with demonetization, I think uh, uh, the credit demand A has caved in. At the same time, sort of, you know, there are uh, uh, a lot of worries about uh, increasing delinquencies because our interactions on the ground, especially in MFIs, clearly shows that there are worries emerging in certain states like Maharashtra or Uttar Pradesh. And there are some of these uh, small time uh, sort of you know, political leaders not up, uh, maybe across the uh, uh, spectrum who basically are fishing in the troubled waters and trying sort of you know, to create uh, a situation where uh, the, uh, the problem of delinquencies could aggravate. So I think uh, wherever the disbursals have been in cash and the collections are in cash, I would advise investors to be very worried before they take the plunge just because the prices have corrected uh, by some measure. Let's wait it out. Let's look at the results. Let's look at the commentary from these managements. How have the uh, sort of the collections fared uh, over till 31st December? And what is the prognosis going forward? And only then sort of, you know, I would advise investors to take plunge in uh, uh, some of the NBFC names. You know, in terms of the point that you made about Maharashtra, what can happen for something like a Bharat Financial or any other name, do you think that can have effects uh, in other states as well? And that could be a big issue? No, as I mentioned to you, I think our channel checks indicate that states like uh, certain districts of Maharashtra, uh, 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 certain districts in Uttar Pradesh, I think are the ones where sort of, you know, there is this incipient uh, 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 trouble which is being sought to be brewed. But I think uh, the industry also is taking all measures, sort of, you know, uh, because finally this money that has been lent to, the, uh, to these MFIs has come from the banking sector, uh, from the Mudra Yojana. So it's a government's money. So I think they are trying to sort of you know, galvanize the administration into uh, ensuring that uh, a signal goes out to all the collectors and all the administrative staff that uh, sort of you know, they need to be constructive in terms of their approach uh, uh, in so far as recoveries are concerned. Right. Uh, what would you look to buy then? You know, consumer, consumer durables, that's also have seen some correction. Uh, would you be, you know, comfortable there? At least the write-off issue or any major debt issue is not a problem in those companies? Uh, Pankaj, I think, uh, uh, now let's look at, let's step back and look how can a portfolio construct happen in the current circumstances. Now, there are these three broad themes, investments, consumption and net exports. Uh, I personally envisage uh, 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 very tough uh, in terms of allocating large money in investment-led themes because the private capex is completely moribund. Government is making an effort in reviving roads, railways uh, and some other sectors. Uh, but I think it's a long haul. I think on the uh, net exports fronts, I think the IT sector uh, currently remains in doldrums. Uh, there is a lot of apprehension about what policies in the first 100 days Trump would enunciate on H-1B visa front, whether he will uh, uh, curtail uh, to a large extent the, the, the quota. And we have seen some of the stalwarts like Mr. Murthy advocating that in the medium term, the Indian outsourcing industry will have to uh, think of ways and means of uh, 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 not relying so much on H-1B and nearshoring or sort of you know, recruiting uh, overseas uh, close to the markets where they are serving. So I think that uh, sector again is in a phase of transition. I don't envisage a strong growth both in top line as well as the margins. If you see there's a good trend that's happening. Companies like Accenture sort of, you know, their margins uh, are moving up. Whereas companies in the Indian outsourcing pack, I think their margins are coming down. So there is a kind of, you know, convergence that is happening. So pressure on margins, uh, tepid, uh, tepid top line growth, I think uh, uh, make uh, IT sector also a sector where large allocation can't be done. Although I do buy the argument that uh, uh, some of these companies have uh, are trading at very uh, attractive valuations. But then those valuations are also a function of the expected earnings growth, which also remain very anemic. Uh, and I don't see a change happening in the uh, near term out there. Uh, so that leaves, uh, uh, if we leave out investments led theme and uh, IT, then the construct consumption led theme is uh, the only theme that one can play on. And here I think the hope is that as the currency already comes back, 6 lakh has already been pumped back by the RBI out of 14 lakh that uh, has gone in the system. So hopefully in a month or so, or maybe two months time, well, when a substantial amount of currency comes back in play, 
the, uh, the latent demand in terms of uh, 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 consumption, consumption discretionary uh, sector should bounce back. And that's why our hope is that uh, allocation should still uh, be done in good companies in uh, auto and auto ancillary space. Companies like say Maruti Suzuki, Tata Motors. Uh, in case of uh, banking, again, retail focused banks. I think banks like Indusind Bank and HDFC Bank would figure primarily in my portfolio. And if you want a slightly higher risk spectrum, then Yes Bank, which has managed asset quality quite well, could be looked at. Uh, in the cement sector, which has got mauled pretty badly, I think some of the uh, mid-cap names have gotten very uh, attractive now. Heidelberg Cement has come down from 150 levels to 106, 7 levels. Uh, very well managed company, EV2, EV Pertin is very low, uh, uh, doing pretty well in its markets. So I think uh, as and when some semblance of sanity returns, these are the names that people will turn towards. Uh, the other large allocation I would do will be in pharma sector especially in the mid-cap pharma, I think, which are bottom-up themes, themes like uh, Glenbach Pharmaceuticals, uh, which has got approval for Zetia, and they're expecting a very strong $150 million of uh, bottom line to come from that drug, which they'll use to repay debt, plus their emphasis on the new chemical entities going forward. Uh, uh, so I think Glenmark can be a very good uh, medium-term bet. Jubilant Life Sciences, in the correction that one has seen, one should continue to look at that company with a medium-term perspective. And Aurobindo Pharma, also, so these three, this trio of uh, Gledbar, Jubilant and Aurobindo should form part of a court portfolio in my opinion.